All right, guys, this video is going to be over different types of graphs and different types of equipment you're going to be using. You should be familiar with most of, most of these, so you can go ahead and pause and fill out the blanks as you need to as I run right through them. The first thing I see most often in the lab is the beaker. The beaker is going to be used for holding approximate volumes of liquid, and because it holds only approximate volumes, we call it qualitative because we're never going to really measure things in beakers. We tend to save measuring for more precise instruments like graduated cylinders. Erlenmeyer flasks, on the other hand, serve the exact same purpose, except they have the smaller opening on top that we can put a cork into. We use those when we're dealing with things that might evaporate very quickly or vaporize. Transfer pipettes is what you're going to use when you're moving, th moving liquids from a stock container like a beaker or, or an Erlenmeyer flask into something that's more precise like a graduated cylinder. You're going to use those a lot when mixing solutions. Now your graduated pipettes are more precise instruments. You're going to use these when you're delivering precise amounts of volumes to liquids. And then your graduated cylinder, you're going to use these a lot. These measure volumes very precisely. It's what you're going to be using when you need an exact amount of something. Uh, volumetric flaps are generally very large and they have that really narrow top so that you can plug it up if you're dealing with something that's going to evaporate quickly. Uh, we use those a lot when we're mixing solutions. Barrettes are kind of weird. They're like the opposite of graduated cylinders. They're still very precise instruments, but instead of measuring how much you're putting into it, now you're going to measure how much is coming out of the burette. You're going to use these when you do titrations. We'll talk about more about titrations in class. Just keep in mind that when you're looking at these, these do count backwards instead of upwards. So it's going to start at zero at top and increase numbers going down. Then we have our two different types of balances. You have an electric balance and a triple beam balance. Uh, they're both precise instruments. They're both quantitative instruments because they're both going to give you numbers. The electronic balances tend to be better than triple beams because the triple beams have a greater potential for sources of error. You have to make sure everything's balanced right before you even put anything on it. Thermometers, obviously, they measure precisely the amount of temperature you're working with. And then you have your test tubes. You do have a couple different types of test tubes, but the one you're going to use in these labs, we're going to call them qualitative because they're just going to be holding devices. It's where we're going to watch reactions take place. Now other tools you're going to be using, scupulas, you're going to use these when you're, when you're transferring solids from one thing to another. Test tube holders does exactly what it says. It holds the test tube so that it, in case it gets hot, you don't have to be holding it with your skin. Test tube clamps will collapse a, a test tube onto a ring stand. Wire gauze is what we use when we're heating things up and we want to, bat, when we want to put a beaker or an early minor flask on there to see what happens when it heats up. Strikers, you've used these before. These are what you're going to use to light your Bunsen burners. Then you have spot plates. Spot plates are also called well plates. You're going to be, see those terms used interchangeably. You're going to use these to test different types of reactions, and they're good to see the comparisons right next to each other. The ring stand has that big, long stick up top that's what you put your, your clamps onto and your wire gauzes. That just holds things high, so you don't have to be holding it with your hands. A ring clamp is just another thing that holds equipment to the ring stand. Let's get into graphs real quick. There are three main types of graphs. Uh, you get your circle or pie chart. Remember when you're doing these, these are really good when you're comparing part of something to a whole. You generally use these percentages. And you know the different, the size of the triangles represents the percentage of whatever aspect you're working with. You can see it in the example over there. Obviously the 37% piece should be proportionally bigger than the 10% piece. And these are good for just comparing things. Uh, bar graphs and histograms, I know you've seen these before. They can either be horizontal or vertical. Most of the time we're going to see them horizontal. Bar graphs are good when you're comparing two different sets of data amongst several different objects. And you can have them horizontal or vertical most of the time you see them horizontal. Now the rectangular bar is different in height according to their value. Then you have line graphs. You're going to see line graphs a lot. Line graphs are very useful. They're very easy to make. Line graphs are good because they show relationships between the data of two variables. They generally compare some type of change over time. So you can see it as it goes up and down. It has those intervals in it. You can see, you can see different types of rates along with those. Now while you're working with those graphs, you need to be, keep in mind the difference between inverse proportions and direct proportions. When we're talking about inverse proportions, we're talking about opposites. That means what happens to one, the opposite happens to the other. So as one goes up in value, the other one goes down in value. And you can see those in mathematical formulas. Anytime you see some type of division problem, you know you have some kind of inverse proportion going on here. And you can play with the numbers and see what we're talking about. Our example I'm going to give you is density. Density equals mass over volume. And here, if we increase the volume, we're actually going to increase or uh, decrease the density. 
So that's what we mean by in inverse proportion. This one goes up, the other one goes down. Directly proportional means that what happens to one thing happens to the other. And here's another example, our multiplication problem. If we increase the value of x, the value of y goes up. And that's the difference between those two. Alas, my children, this is the day you should always remember is the day that you all know. Captain Jack Sparrow.